All right guys, so on today's field tips, we're gonna talk about tuning your longbow or your recurve for perfect arrow flight. So stick with us. So before we really get into tuning, I wanna talk a little bit about why it's important. And the number one reason is that perfect arrow flight is one of the top factors in arrow penetration. And if we're bow hunters, that is something we should all be concerned with. Additionally, a perfectly tuned arrow really needs very little guidance from the fletchings. And what that means is you can get away with running very small fletchings, relatively. And the reason that that's important is because big fletchings, first, they create a lot of drag, which reduces your arrow's efficiency. They create a lot of noise. And as I said, with perfectly tuned arrows, they're really unnecessary. And what's really happening oftentimes with traditional shooters that shoot big fletchings is that they're using those fletchings to cover up improperly tuned arrows. So let's figure out how we can tune these arrows to fly perfectly from our bows. Now the first thing that we need to get set is our knock height. Now I would talk about brace height, but most bows are going to come with a recommended brace height. For me personally, for myself bows, I like to run them six, six and a half inches, which is for most longbows and recurves is pretty, uh, pretty low, but my bows tend to shoot pretty good around that brace height. Now I'll make quick mention of how you can change your arrow flight through changing your brace height. Uh, if you raise your brace height a little bit, it's going to have the same effect as shooting a little higher spined arrow and lowering your brace height is going to have the opposite effect. All right, let's go shoot a little bit. If you're on Instagram, go ahead and look me up there at Clay Hayes Hunter. I'm constantly uploading new content there. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, uh, you might wanna go ahead and do that so you don't miss any future content. So, one thing that you need to keep in mind when you are uh, tuning your bows is that if you can't your bow one way or the other, if you're left or right-handed, when you're reading your flight, your knock left or knock right, you need to read it in, re in relation to the bow. So if you're canted like this, a knock left or a weak spine indication will actually be knock high and left. And so when I'm first setting up a bow, first tuning my bow, I try to shoot them pretty vertical, uh, whereas most of the time I'll shoot them with a little bit of a cant to it, just so it doesn't confuse things. Um, just so that you can read, you know, knock left or knock right, up and down, and you don't ha really have to account for that cant. Let's talk a little bit about your knock height. What I generally recommend is to start high. Now for me personally, I start at about 5 8 inch above square and then I'll start moving down from there. But depending on how your bow is tillered and how you shoot, you may need to go higher than that to start with. Now the reason that I start with a really high knock point is that because I know when I start with a not high knock point, I'm going to get knock high arrow flight. Now when you're setting your knock point, if you go a little bit too low, sometimes you'll get knock low. Sometimes if you weigh too low, it'll bounce off the shelf and you'll get knock high. And so if you start with a knocking point that's at square or somewhere around where you think it's gonna be finally, you know, if you get knock high flight, you don't know which way to go to correct it. So by starting high and working your way down, you'll, you'll know that you, you're gonna get knock high flight to start with and you just keep moving that thing down until you start to get good arrow flight. When you're adjusting your knock point, just do it in very small increments. We're talking a 16th of an inch or so and that'll make a difference and you'll be able to tell. Now that we've got our knock point set, let's go ahead and get into the meat of tuning. Now, I'm gonna give you a very simple method of tuning but before we get into that, I just wanna talk a little bit about and try to summarize some of the other methods of tuning. So I'm sure if you've looked into tuning very much, you've, you've heard of bear shaft tuning, uh, paper tuning. You may have come across a, a, a planing method of tuning or a broadhead planing method of tuning. And all of these different methods of tuning are basically looking at different symptoms of the same problems. For example, if you are bear shaft tuning, 
you might be looking at the position of the knock when your arrow is sticking out of the target. So is it knock left or knock right? If you're paper tuning, you're looking at different tears in the paper, uh, knock left, knock right, up, down. Um, with the planing method, methods of tuning, you're looking at uh, either where your arrows group in relation to the target, or if you're shooting broadheads, where your broadheads group in relation to your fill tips. And like I said, all of these things are just looking at different symptoms of the same problems. And that problem that we're concerned with is having an arrow that is matched to the bow. Now, to understand this, we need to understand the difference between static spine and dynamic spine. So when you order shafts or arrows, you're gonna have the option to choose different spines. And for carbon shafts like this one, you're gonna have options like 300 spine, 350, 400, 500, things like that. And what that is, is the static spine or how much this arrow deflects when it's put on a spine tester like the one I've got here. It's all, it, all it's looking at is how stiff that arrow is. Now for wood shafts or bamboo shafts or something like that, uh, the spine ranges are gonna be a little bit different than carbon arrows. Uh, for wood, you're gonna be looking at spine ranges of like 50 to 55, 55, 60, 65, and so on. Um, but it's basically the same type of measurements. It's when this thing is sitting on a bench spanning two points, you hang a weight from the center, how much is this arrow deflecting? That is static spine and it's just a starting point. Just because you shoot a 55 pound bow does not mean that you need a 55 pound shaft because arrows aren't made to sit on benches. They're made to be shot and shooting is a dynamic process. So to try to illustrate what I mean, I've got two different bows here. One is very close to center shot and the other one is not. So this self bow for instance is if not center shot very close to center shot. And I'm holding this bow with the string perfectly bisecting the handle and you can see that the arrow is pointed directly in front of the string. Now, set this one down for a second, grab this other bow. Now, I'm doing the same thing, I'm holding the bow so that from my perspective, the string is bisecting the handle and you can see now that the arrow, instead of pointing directly in front of the string at the camera, now the arrow is pointing to the left. So why is this important? Well, with this bow being not center shot, when I shoot this bow, the arrow or the string is trying to shove the arrow through the riser of this bow. And so obviously it can't do that. And so the arrow has to flex around the riser of the bow. And that phenomenon is called Archer's Paradox. And if you Google Archer's Paradox, you can find some pretty amazing slow motion videos that show how that arrow flexes around the riser of the bow. Now, I just wanna run through what's going on here. So there's a couple of things that are coming into play here. And one big one is inertia. Now inertia is the tendency of an object to remain unchanged. And that's gonna make sense here in just a second. So when I take this bow and draw it, you, you'll, you're gonna see the tip of that arrow come, as it's being drawn, it's gonna swing over into alignment with the camera lens. And when I let down, it's gonna to move to the left. Okay, now that we've got that, when I come back to full draw and shoot this bow, when I drop that string, the arrow tip has inertia. It wants to remain unchanged. It wants to remain on that same path. But the bow string, as it moves towards the riser of the bow, is trying to force that arrow tip to the left for a right-handed shooter. Now, because that arrow tip wants to remain the same and the bow, bow string wants to push it over, the arrow shaft has to flex. It has to flex around the riser of this bow. And that flex, or the degree of that flex, 
That is dynamic spine, and that is what is critical for getting perfect arrow flight out of a bow like this that is not center shot. So this all may sound like a bunch of academia, but really it's not because it really comes into play when you're thinking about what spine arrows you need to shoot from a particular bow. Now I can tell you from firsthand experience that these two bows, this one being center shot and this one not being center shot, they both draw the same weight but whereas this arrow like, or this bow likes a 60 pound shaft, this one likes more of a 70 pound shaft. The reason being that when I draw and shoot this bow, the arrow is more in alignment um, with the string. And so the arrow doesn't have to deflect around the riser of this bow where it does around the bow that's not center shot. The two other things that are really gonna come into play are your draw length and your tip weight. And if you think of draw length in terms of leverage, it'll help, un help you understand what impact it's gonna have on your dynamic range. So of course, if you have a longer lever arm, you're gonna have more force, you're gonna be able to apply more force to the arrow. And so if you're drawing over 28 inches, that uh, just gives more leverage and basically weakens the shaft. And so it's easier to flex a long shaft than it is a short, short shaft. And so if you're drawing over 28 inches, you're typically going to require a little bit higher spine range. If you're drawing under 28 inches, you're gonna require a little bit lower spine range. And all of, this in, all of these things work in conjunction with one another, and I'll, I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, the tip weight, if you want to shoot a very high tip weight, let's say 190, 240, 300, something like that, those higher tip weights are gonna require a little bit higher spine range. So the higher tip weights are just going to increase the inertia and it's gonna decrease your dynamic spine. It's going to make that arrow flex more. And so let's take all these things and put them in combination. Let's say that we have a bow that is uh, center shot or close to center shot. Let's say that we have a 29 or a 30 inch draw and we wanna shoot a really heavy head. Well, you take all of those things in, in conjunction. All of them require a little bit higher spine range. And so if we shoot a 60 pound bow that's center shot, we have a 29 inch draw and we wanna shoot a 250 grain head, well, we might require a 90 pound shaft. So Three Rivers actually has an arrow spine calculator where you can take all your information, your draw length, your uh, uh, desired tip weight, the center shot of your bow, all of these things, plug it into this formula and it'll kind of get you in the general ballpark where you need to be. Then what I would suggest is just go ahead and either make an arrow test kit or get one from Three Rivers uh, where you have multiple arrows in multiple different spine ranges. So you might have, um, you know, depending on all of those factors that we talked about, you might have uh, an arrow or two in the 45 to 50 uh, spine range. You might have one in 50, 55, uh, 55, 60, and 60, 65. And you take those multiple arrows and then go to the next step, which we're gonna talk about. Then you start playing with your dynamic spine and the different combination of tip weight and arrow length and all of those things. All right, so dynamic spine is what's important, but how do we manipulate that to get perfect arrow flight? So as we've talked about, the degree of center shot is going to be a big factor in dynamic spine, but it's not really something you're gonna have a large influence over. You're not gonna take your custom longbow and take a rasp to the sight window and start uh, taking material out to thin that out. Now, you can add to or take a little bit away from your strike plate so you can build that out a little bit to make the bow less center shot. And what that would do is make that bow accept a weaker spine shaft. And so you do have a little bit of influence or a little bit of play that way. Now, I don't spend a lot of time worrying about that. The two things that I uh, use to manipulate my dynamic spine are one, tip weight, and then also arrow length. Now, uh, let's go ahead and just shoot a couple of bear shafts just to 
take a look at what influence um, tip weight can have on dynamic spine and aeroflight. All right, so for this demonstration, we're gonna go ahead and shoot a couple of bear shafts. Now, this isn't something that I would typically do early in the tuning process. Uh, we'll get into bear shaft tuning, but it's gonna be later. Uh, the reason that I don't bear shaft tune right off the bat is it because if you have a bow and arrows that are mismatched, oftentimes when you shoot that bear shaft, it's gonna come off the bow at such an angle that when it hits the target, it's just gonna break the shaft. The tip is gonna stick and the knock into that arrow is gonna whip around and snap that shaft off. And so if you're gonna bear shaft, go ahead and get your, your fletched arrows uh, tuned, then move to the bear shaft. Now the only reason I'm gonna be shooting these bear shafts right now early in the tuning process is so that it'll really show up so that you can see what impact a stiff or a weak spine has on arrow flight. Now we're gonna be shooting a 55 pound longbow, a 75 pound shaft, and the first shot's gonna be with a 190 grain tip. Now this particular combination is a little bit over spine for this bow, and when the arrow comes off the bow, you're gonna see a severe knock right, which equals over spine. Now we can fix this in a couple of different ways. We can either get a lighter weight shaft or a heavier tip. Let's go ahead and throw a 300 gain tip on there and see what influence that it has. So you can see when this arrow comes off the bow, it's flying perfectly straight with no fletchings. So that example makes it pretty clear how changing your tip weight can influence your dynamic spine and really have a huge impact on how those arrows come off your bow and fly down range. All right, so I wanna jump in here real quick and just explain why you're seeing these things, why you're seeing knock left and knock right. Um, so when we have a dynamic spine that's too low for our bow, the arrow is flexing too much. And so what happens for a right-handed shooter is that this arrow, when it flexes too much, it goes around the riser, kicks the knock to the left. Okay, so when our dynamic spine is too high, the arrow doesn't flex enough and it kicks the arrow's tip that way, which causes the uh, arrow to come off the bow like this, knock right. So that's why you get a knock right indication for a stiff spine, a knock left indication for a weak spine. Back to the show. But what if you have a tip weight that you like and you wanna stick with that tip weight? Well, luckily that's where arrow length comes in, whereas Tip weight, changing the tip weight changes the inertia and changes the flex. The arrow length also can change the flex because it changes the amount or the, how much leverage your arrow, your arrow tip has on the shaft. A longer shaft is easier to flex than a shorter shaft. So by shortening that shaft a little at a time, we can stiffen that dynamic spine. Now, when I build a new set of arrows, I leave them full length. I do not cut the ends of the arrow off because I use that length of the arrow to adjust how stiff that dynamic spine is. I have a tip weight that I want to use. Usually for me, it's about 190 grains. Um, and I tune my arrows by shortening them incrementally to increase by my dynamic spine. So when I first make a new bunch of arrows, I want them to, when I shoot them, I want to see a weak spine indication. And so what I do is get my wife to stand on a platform behind me and film right over the top so that she's in line with the arrow and in line with the target and film me shooting in slow motion. And what that allows me to do is review that footage and see what my arrows are doing. Are they knock left? Are they knock right? Now, if I make a new batch of arrows and they're, they're left long, full length, and I get a knock right flight, I'm already way too stiff. And there's nothing that I'm gonna do to, to reduce that dynamic spine so that that arrow is gonna fly well off that bow, except for move to a, a higher tip weight. If I moved from a, a 200 grain tip to a 300 grain tip, I could probably correct that. But then you're gonna run into issues with total arrow weight, 
trajectory and things like that. So like I said, I like to stick with about 190 grain tip. And so in that case, what I'm gonna have to do is just move to a little bit lower spine range. Now, when I make a new set of arrows, what I want to see on that first shot or those first couple of shots is I wanna see a weak spine indication. My arrow's still long, so I wanna see that weak spine, which is knock left for a right-handed shooter. So when I shoot that arrow and I review that footage, that arrow is gonna come off the bow and it's gonna tail to the left. Now, when I see that, what I'm gonna do is come back in here to the shop, I'm gonna take the tip off, I'm gonna take, depending on how much tail left, uh, I'm gonna take a little bit off the length of that arrow. Now, to be safe, do it a quarter inch at a time because you don't want to get past where you're seeing a, 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 a stiff spine indication because the, then the only way to fix it is to uh, either move to a higher tip weight or um, thin out your arrow shelf or something like that. And so shoot the arrow, review the footage, take a little off, put your tip back on, shoot again, review the footage again, and keep doing that over and over and over again. And you'll eventually see that that tail left it will come right into alignment until you start getting perfect arrow flight. That is the simplest, most straightforward method of tuning that I can find. So if you wanna get really fine with your tuning, uh, you can bear shaft tune, but I would, I would recommend waiting to start bear shafting until after you've got your flat shafts flying really good and you really can't tell a difference in your flat shafts, whether they're left or right. Uh, once you get to that point, then you can either take one of your other shafts that's the same spine uh, that is not fletched or you can just strip the feathers off one of your arrows and shoot a couple of uh, bear shafts and do the same thing. If you've got somebody to help film, uh, have them film. If you don't, you can just take your camera and set it up uh, right behind the target, right on top if you're looking for left or right or just to the side if you're looking for up and down. Uh, but when you strip the feathers off your fletchings and start shooting bear shafts, any little inconsistency in your form will cause uh, uh, confusion. If you are collapsing at all, if, you, if your form is not perfect, oftentimes it'll cause um, false positives and, and just weird results with bear shafts, so be aware of that. Um, if you don't have your form dialed in and you're not getting into your back tension and having a good release, bear shafting is just going to lead to frustration. So um, just keep that in mind. Now I want to say that tuning should only come after you have got your shooting form and your shooting technique down. Because if you can't group arrows, there is no amount of tuning in the world that is going to help you. It's just going to lead to frustration. So um, what I would suggest is work on your form, work on your back tension, work on your release, all of that stuff until you can group your arrows. Now, it doesn't matter where you group your arrows as long as they're in a group. If they're grouping left or grouping right, uh, those are things that you can fix through tuning. But if you're spraying arrows all over the target, just bookmark this video and come back to it later after you've watched some of my other shooting tips videos and got all of your, your form and your back tension and your release and all that stuff dialed in. Get that fixed first, then start worrying about tuning. All right, so now that I've got uh, my knock height set, I've got the arrow uh, trimmed exactly the length that I need it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just take my bow square, put it back on here, and get a measurement on my knock height and I'm gonna write that down just in case I have to change strings or something gets messed up. I'm gonna record both my brace height, my knock height, and then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take this arrow that's flying perfect, this bear shaft, I'm gonna take it back in the shop. I'm gonna take the tip off of it so that I can get an accurate measurement on the length and then I'm just gonna build the rest of my arrows to match this one. Now I'm gonna be going into more detail on tuning on my Patreon site. So for you guys that are signed up,
Uh, if you have specific questions, just let me know and I can try to help you with whatever tuning problems you might be having. Um, or if you have suggestions on how to expand what I've covered in this video or what details you want to go into, just let me know and I can make a video uh, for the Patreon site that's going to go into those things. Um, but with that, I appreciate all the support on Patreon and we'll see you next time.